What's up, cellar dwellers? Doing my son's dinner. Henry and I just watched the 1990s 13 Ghosts, uh, which is the remake of the original from 1950? I don't remember the date, but the original one. Um, so I've done this movie once, but I had, not this movie, this review once, but I had confused House on Haunted Hill with 13 Ghosts. So I wanted to redo it. I didn't confuse, but I started mixing up the the facts of each movie. Um, the only thing that stays the same about this movie is the inheritance of the house, um, the glasses in which you see the 13 ghosts with, and that's it. It's weird, the original 13 Ghosts is kind of blurry to me, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so, this one, a dude's wife dies in a fire, um, so his family and him are left without the wife and mom, and um, they live in this little tiny shithole house, and a lawyer comes, that is the like, lawyer of the estate because this, dude, this dude's long-lost uncle, Cyrus, has died. Cyrus is leaving his house to um, the dad. I don't remember his name. And um, I guess, so I guess before that, Cyrus is trying to capture a ghost out in the middle of a junk field, like junkyard, and he ends up dying because the ghosts kill everybody except the psychic that's there. The psychic in this movie, the psychic friend, is a character, not a character, but an actor from Hackers, and the entire time all I can see is him and Hackers. So, uh, psychic's actually at the house, at the estate. Henry, stop doing that, bud. Um, Hen Henry. The psychic is actually at the estate. Uh, when they show up to look at this house because it was given to them. And uh, he's there to, I don't know, look for money, I guess, because Cyrus owed him money. They get inside, stuff happens, they realize the psychic tells them that the house is full of ghosts. The ghosts end up trying to kill the entire family because that's what they do. They can only see them with the glasses like we talked about. Um, and... This lady shows up that ends up helping everybody. She's there to release the ghost, according to her. Hold on, I gotta go get a. I gotta go get a bib. So, she's there to apparently release these ghosts. But what she's not telling them is that she's in love with Cyrus, even though he is dead. Cyrus being the bad guy, and Cyrus has trapped all these ghosts to open up the gates of hell. And the 13th ghost is needed from the dad who needs to sacrifice himself to create a ghost. And that 13th ghost is needed. That live sacrifice is needed to open up the gates of hell. Opening up the gates of hell would make him the most powerful man on earth. So, ends up the dad thinks he's sacrificing himself as the machine is being destroyed. He ends up avoiding all the blades that would kill him and make the sacrifice and lands in the center where his kids are, where Cyrus put them to instill fear and make the dad think that he actually had to do this. Um, so he lands in the middle, kids are fine, blah, 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 movie ends. And then somewhere in there, they see the ghost of his wife and mom. A couple times they see her. As a standalone movie, this movie really sucked me in. It was very modern, uh, had great music. It, um, like the sound effects and the visual uh, was fantastic. And my VHS tape was a little wonky, had these wavy lines to it the whole time. Um, so, but the creativity of the movie, it isn't there. They didn't have, they took major liberties in the remake of this movie, but there was no creativity. Your base idea has already been done. So you, you lose all of that. But when it comes to the music, um, like I said, it just, it worked. The sound effects worked. The visual was a ton, you know, a lot better. You know, there's like six, 40 years difference, something like that, 45. Um, music, the creativity is gone. What the hell is the other one that I'm missing? Lasting impact. If I had to watch this before bed, I wouldn't be scared to have bad dreams, but it would definitely, it, it affects you. You would think you'd be thinking about it if you let yourself get sucked into the movie. And did VHS matter? VHS hurt this movie. Um, 
especially my copy, like I said, the wavy lines. This movie was uh, recorded and put together in a fashion where seeing it on DVD would certainly help. Uh, so as a standalone movie, I think they had a vi they didn't have a vision. They took someone else's vision. They wanted to uh, put you on edge, scare you a little bit. There were no jump scares, but you're just tense the whole time. And uh, so with that said, their execution of what they wanted to do was very, it was done very well. Uh, it turns out I had seen this movie, by the way. I just didn't realize it until tonight or this afternoon. Um, so I'm going to give it a seven as a standalone movie. Um, but that doesn't change. That is drastically different from the rating I'm going to give it as a remake, which is what it is. Uh, the original, I really enjoyed. It was fun to watch. Um, that horror, that style of horror is completely different from this. And I do find myself leaning towards the remake style uh, because it's tense. It's, it never ends. Um, it's gory. There's blood. There's all sorts of things that you don't find in the original um Hollywood stories, um, movies. So as a remake, like they did the original basically zero justice. Um, you know what I just thought of? The kid that's trying to find the money in the original, and it's in the staircase in the original, there's the dude, the lawyer is in the remake is looking for the money from the owner, which is the same uh, between both movies. So I just made another connection in my head. So there are some similarities, but when it comes to the ghost, it's um, drastically different. Uh, so the remake, the uh, original, um, if I had to, if I have to rate, and I do feel like I have to, I saw the original first, if I have to rate this movie as a remake, um, there's very little about it that would say this is a remake of 13 Ghosts. Uh, just done with better graphics, better act, not better act, not technically not better actors, but newer actors, um, better graphics, more money pushed into it. Um, it's a remake and it doesn't say much for the original movie. So as a remake, and that's how I'm judging this movie, not as a standalone movie, as a remake, it is a three. Solid. And that might even be generous. And um, the, in my opinion, I'm glad that I saw the original first because I do think it's better. Um, all around the concept is brand new super visionary uh, out of the box for the time so yeah that's it uh, a three as a remake and if it was standalone and if I could judge it as a standalone I'd give it a seven um, that's it cellar dwellers I watched it with Henry and the original was a lot better because I had him in my arms and it was like cute because it's a father dad moment but I really fucked up the <laughs> Um, facts of the movie comparing House and Haunted Hill and combining it with 13 Go. So I had to make sure I redid it and uh, did it right. So I'm going to finish feeding him. Oh, I forgot to mention I'm only doing this because we don't think George is going to fucking do his part. So this is an extra. I still have one other movie coming uh, and by the time you see this it will have already played. So at the time of this recording I still have The Exorcist to do. And if we don't feel like George is going to do his job I'm gonna have to do another one of these. And I have a couple things in mind, but we'll get there when we get there. All right, cellar dwellers, peace.